Thanks to both Mike and Jess for offer offering me this opportunity to talk a little bit more about how the book's editorial team at Taylor & Francis use, understand and manage the metrics data that surrounds the books we publish. This is an area I've actively engaged with and have been passionate about for a number of years now, and I'm delighted to see this new module come into fruition. My name's Nicola Parkin, and as part of my role as Director of Books Editorial Services at TNF, I'm dedicated to driving the discoverability and demonstrating and understanding the impact of the book content we publish and responsible for engaging editorial teams to use that understanding to influence future commissioning decisions. I also have an overall strategic responsibility for our open access books program, where we understandably demonstrate and quantify impact and that is the forefront of many conversations. So these are the points I'd like to cover today giving some background on our journey into using and managing book metrics and talking a bit about some of the challenges we've faced and how our activity in this area has evolved in line with the demands from the market. Book publishers and the research they publish came later to the metrics game than our journal's counterparts. Until the last few years, supplying sales figures or library holding statistics was the main way a book publisher conveyed the success of an individual book and that satisfied the author, their institution, and even the funder of their work. Even as recently as five years ago, we had very few conversations with our authors around the indexing of their work in selective indexes such as Scopus and Web of Science, and even fewer conversations around ebook usage, optometric scores, Google Scholar indexing, or the importance of accurate metadata to help and drive and capture citation activity. These questions and discussions are now much more common and have driven us to work more closely and proactively with the third parties we supply our metadata to, and to understand and articulate the mechanisms and decision processes that sit behind the data so that we have more informed conversations with our authors. Among other initiatives, we've mandated the supply of abstracts for all our content at the chapter level and strongly advise our authors to supply ORCIDs so we can connect that to their content in their Crossref deposits. We've routinely assigned and registered DOIs for all our book content at both a book and chapter level for a number of years now and are working on doing the same for our full backlist and have supplied that DOI in print and electronic editions since the beginning of 2021 to encourage use when citing the publication. We've developed active relationships with indexes such as Web of Science and Scopus, refining those data feeds to ensure that they contain all the information that they need and minimising additional lines of data facilitating series level indexing and removing confusions that stem from multiple identifiers attached to different versions of the same content. Our open channel of communication with Dimensions has helped us understand better how our data is represented in that platform and how we can work with them to enhance the profile and ensure the content produced by our authors is presented to the best of our abilities. Our ebook platform is fully indexed by Google Scholar, which required extensive work with the team at Google to ensure we were fulfilling their criteria. And this was a significant milestone for us in our journey to supporting book metrics. And finally, even in a landscape where we're a variety of metrics available to us, we still do use sales figures as a key indicator. The benefit is it's now surrounded by a complementary set of other figures that we're working to understand and integrate into our decision-making processes. The metrics that surround a book publication give us the opportunity to create a narrative and contextualize the publication within its field. The challenge is that where a journal's publisher can point, albeit problematically, at a journal level impact factor, we're often working at a book level for thousands of books each year, trying to easily define and communicate in a variety of fields across HSS and STEM content, what impactful really means. So to date, we focused our efforts in a few key areas. We seek to supply content to all major selective and comprehensive citation indexes. We've identified from our authors that particularly in some fields, being indexed in key indexes is incredibly important when they're discussing their work with their funder or their institution, or to ensure it's highlighted appropriately to their peers. Altmetric attention of our books. Following the altmetric attention of our books, we're currently working with altmetric team to supply them with the metadata to track our books accurately and comprehensively, giving us the opportunity to highlight and promote our books where we see that they've had real world impact. We can then drive this engagement forward. It might involve spotlighting the author on social media or, or our website, or including it within future marketing campaigns. 
We ensure that our usage statistics are counter compliant and provide detailed guidance to libraries on how the count is calculated to ensure that direct comparisons are possible with other publishers. This does present us an evolving challenge, particularly when looking at chapter and book level usage counts and whether that content is downloaded or viewed from a platform. As a publisher, we're strongly committed to the development of open access scholarship. Our thriving OA Books programme means that we're ever more mindful of funders and authors' expectations around impact, usage and the geographical reach. And it's this strand of our publishing that is one of the key catalysts for innovation in the company. It's stretching us to do more and to develop faster. It's particularly valuable to be able to offer that context on the additional usage that our open access books accrue and a wider geographical spread of that usage, demonstrating the increased impact of making that content open and supporting the move to open scholarship. Traditional sales metrics obviously struggle to be a useful barometer of success in this space. Whilst conversations and engagement around impact, citation counts and usage of book content are now much more common than they were a few years ago, one of the challenges we continue to face is educating both our staff and our authors. We're currently engaged in ensuring that any numbers we do share are put into context where possible and are supplied with clear explanation of how that figure has been calculated, training and guiding editorial staff so that they're confident to discuss these numbers with their authors. Linking metrics back to good metadata is key. The cleaner and more structured the identifiers and the metadata surrounding a book is, the easier it can be for discovery services and citation indexes to accurately identify the right authors, the right citations and categorize that content effectively. Citations in particular have long been used as a measure of impact for a publication, but for books, the way they're cited is still really variable and there are struggles around that metadata. That citation can sit at a book or a chapter level. It can rely on indexes to make a successful connection from one to the other. We provide DOIs for all our content at a book and chapter level to ensure it can be picked up by platforms such as Google Scholar or Dimensions and that people can follow that content back to the source. But the reality is that one book can be cited in a range of different ways, using an ISBN, sometimes one of the many that are assigned to different versions of that same book, a chapter or a book DOI, or even just the title. This variability and reliance on each platform making that connection is one of the reasons that citation counts can vary between existing platforms and citations can get missed. Counter compliant usage is really complex and understanding what's being counted when you're presented with ebook usage for a particular title can be almost impossible for an end user. On top of this, there's a need to contextualize that usage figure for a subject or a subdiscipline. What does good look like for this type of book or a book in this area? How long has the book been available? Is the book open access? Is that usage high or low or average based on those factors? The data can otherwise get misleading very quickly and lead us to the wrong conclusions. Another challenge to flag here is that unlike journals, a proportion of ebook usage for some publishers is filtered through third party providers such as EBSCO or ProQuest. Whilst we're now confident in the usage numbers on our own platform, we're still on the journey of aggregating usage from other hosts of our content. So the number that can be provided may only ever be a proportion of that usage, it's not the full picture. Some indexes don't cover all books. Indexes such as Web of Science or Scopus select what they index from the range of content we feed them. So it doesn't necessarily give a full picture of the landscape, which is something we seek to communicate both internally and to our authors. And citations on books can take a long time to accrue. So understanding early indicators of impact like altmetric attention and also being realistic about citation counts and what good looks like in that field can be vital when comparing performance or communicating impact metrics to authors or funders. We have chosen to work with a variety of book metrics to help add an additional dimension to our commissioning processes. We've spent some time ensuring that the starting point for using book metrics is knowing the question you want to answer. For us, we're actively using sources such as dimensions to understand the evolution of a new subject area, to test and validate theories about new areas in which we may wish to increase our publishing activity. This could involve looking at grant information, the volume and trend of publishing activity, citation counts, or the activity of our competitors in this space. 
we can use citation data from a range of indexes to identify particularly influential researchers and understand better the connections with other researchers and how a new field may be evolving. This allows us to support researchers publishing in that area and publish impactful and cutting edge research. If you wanted to know whether to double down in a successful established area, you may be looking for different indicators and also need to feed in additional and often internal data points. It's worth saying that as good as access to all this data is, we strive to operate a data informed rather than a data driven approach. Our use of this data is designed to try and get our commissioning editors to the right researchers in a given area quickly, narrowing down a huge pool to a potential hit list but leaving them with more time to, dedica to dedicate to a full evaluation of who to approach and what data points matter most in that specific case. And then to look beyond the data points to a qualitative evaluation, determining what a new book in that area should look like for us. We've also undertaken a certain amount of internal engagement and training to ensure that metrics are used in context. It isn't possible or desirable to put hard and fast rules in place. 100 publications in three months in a specific area does not necessarily equal a strong area that we should look to publish in more. It doesn't work as a rule of thumb. It would depend on the area. We need to look at the trajectory of that output. And finally, all data sources still have gaps and our editors have been encouraged to trust their instincts and their knowledge of the field and interrogate the data to understand better why something may surprise them. So what next? Well, our key learning point over the last few years is that the better the data we supply, the better the data we get back to support our authors in demonstrating the impact and the reach of their content. So as a book publisher that strives to put the author experience at the heart of everything we do, we're constantly looking at ways to enhance this, but there is still a lot of work to do. Following on from that, we want to continue to listen to the demands of our researchers and those funders who've supported that research, including institutions. We've prioritised our engagement in this area based on the information about their books that our authors demand to support them in their professional career. And we followed this up by helping them understand and have confidence in the metrics that surround book content. We will continue to support and participate in conversations and initiatives around open access books and their metrics, where questions around impact and value of funded research is at its most prominent and responsible for driving those conversations. And we're looking to develop further our understanding of how these different metrics interact and correlate with each other. Is one an indicator for another? And do we have a clear picture on how they build up with each other over time or in different disciplines, for example? We continue to support and engage conversations around metadata standards. We're actively participating in working groups with organizations such as Crossref to refine the metadata we do send and to discuss which new fields or what new data might be required in the future to support all the connections between content. I hope you found this a useful short perspective on the challenges and opportunities that this new world of data offers book publishers and those they engage with. Please do reach out if there's anything you would like to discuss further.